Hi, it's Gary Ross, and I'm a workplace communications trainer and coach. And I'm going to be on the online prosperity show. And we're going to talk about workplace communication, how you as a business leader can persuade and inform and influence the people you work with every day, both inside your company and also outside as well. So join us. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the communications trainer and coach himself, Gary Ross. Gary, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic. Today is going to be an exciting episode because good internal communications actually ensures clarity for everyone within a business. So when you notice that work is not being done or people are slacking off at work, maybe you as a business owner, you are not communicating well, but it needs to be effective in order for you to actually function. And in this video today, we're going to be revealing the true value of internal communication and how transparency, communication and feedback can lead to success. Now, I'm not really good at communicating the actual value of this. I'll let the expert. Oh, come on. Ellis. Oh, come on. Yes, you are. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Gary, you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got uh, started on your journey to be a communications expert. Yeah, well, I, I started my career actually as a journalist, and that gave me some terrific experience on uh, learning how to tell stories and also distilling complex information into some very simple uh, communication. I had to go out and, and learn about things and distill them into very short uh, TV segments and radio segments. After that, I got into communications. And as I worked in public relations and media relations and increased responsibility in my career, I got really passionate about internal communications because to me, it's a it's a win win. It's where you can benefit an organization and the individuals within an organization at the same time. When if if it's done well, then an organization gets a an engaged and and happy and informed workforce, and then the individuals walking in the door every day or opening their computers every day to to start work understand how their jobs connect to the big picture, and they're motivated and they're bought in and they're and they're ready to go. A lot of times, too, it's folks who are running organizations, who are starting and, and growing organizations, are starting to realize that as, as they succeed, the complexities of communication grow exponentially. And that's something else that that I that I help folks with is is understanding what some of the, the pitfalls might be, but also what some of the benefits are for when you're able to communicate effectively, not only with the people who are, are working for you, but also the folks who you're working with, even outside the organization as well. So I there, there's one organization I work with where I train folks not only to communicate better within the organization, but also with their clients and the people outside as well, to show up professionally, to show up and, and communicate concisely and in a way that you can influence and, and persuade people. So if you're sitting there and you're wondering, you know, why didn't, how, how come nobody reads my emails or people read my emails, but they don't understand them or they don't get back to me. That's where we start to see some of the communication issues there. And that's what I love helping people with. Absolutely. And, um, you know, if you're just maybe getting started in, in business, you start uh, having a team around you, you start finding that, you know, you've just really started getting a few more headaches because people problems um you know usually stem or emanate from communication problems now you did mention that um you know with communication it helps employees isn't it enough for somebody to just hire people that are good at what they're doing and you stand out of their way no <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> it it's it, getting out of their way yes uh, you, you want them you're hiring people because you you believe in them you believe in their your in, in their abilities you you trust them to to do the right thing and exercise good judgment and and so forth but they also need to be aligned with and they want to be aligned with too the the overall vision of their leader and the overall vision of their business so they know that the work that you are entrusting them to do is 
aligned with where you as a leader want to take the the organization. They could be going off and doing great work and being successful in something because they're smart and good at what they do. That has absolutely nothing to do with where you want to take the company. And so how do you fix that? As a leader, you become uh, you you concentrate on communicating your vision and having your folks understand where they fit in. So it's not only enough to say, okay, give give them the tools to go out and and do their job, but have them understand how they fit in, why they're doing the things that you are asking them to do. So they can go on and make even better decisions and work even better and even smarter. And everybody is is aligned and then the organization becomes successful and then everybody reaps the rewards. Absolutely. So when the teams get bigger, obviously there needs to be sharing of information between departments. So this can be either verbal or electronically. And sometimes, um, you know, companies can use, um, you know, the internet or some sort of communication platform like that. Now, how do you then, um, you know, advise companies to utilize these tools in a way that they're not constantly uh, in each other's ear and actually disrupting the flow of information, um, you know, based on the availability of the tools 24-7? Yeah, so we, we don't want to be in front of everybody, right, uh, all the all the time because they, then they can't do their, their jobs. I once did a a communication audit for an organization and help them realize that they were communicating uh, to one particular audience in uh, 19 different ways. And that is just, that's just way too much. People, human beings can't handle that, that much bombardment. So as, as an organization grows, a couple of things come to mind. Number one, you want to have some sort of predictability in your communication if you're if you're having a town hall or if you're you're having a meeting or you're sending out a summary email do it the same time every week or every month if 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 monthly is is okay and and then number 2 have it be have communication be uh something that's that's natural for for folks in their in their daily uh work life so there's a there's an axiom go to where the people are so if people are uh, whether they're they're in an office or they're a physical office in a in a break room, or if they're a virtual group and and they use certain tools through the nature of their work, go to those tools and and communicate there. Whether that's email, whether it's dropping in on on Zoom or Teams meetings, uh, along those lines. So going to where the people are is is also very important. And then also make sure that the the information is is relevant to them and it comes from a, a trustworthy source now in a small organizations the source can generally be the the leader of the of the organization of the of the company but as organizations grow people tend to want to get information from their direct manager they're the most trusted source they tend to be the most trusted source for individual employees so as you're growing start thinking about how you can equip your your managers, the folks who have people reporting to them, to be good communicators. Make sure they have the information they need. Make sure they understand the corporate vision and how their teams and how their their people fit into what it is you're trying to do. So then they can go ahead and and turn around and and communicate to their folks. Often it's not the an issue is not that a manager is not a good communicator, is they don't have the confidence to go out and communicate, or they don't feel that they have the permission or the right information to go out and and talk to people. So, as a as a senior leader, it helps to uh, helps to equip those folks with that, and that's something as a communication coach and trainer that I that I help people with. Absolutely, part of what you do, and also with your experience being a journalist, you did mention earlier is to be able to tell stories. Now, doesn't that distract from the actual, um, you know, productivity or engagement of the business when people sit around, like you say, in a town hall telling stories? No, not at all. It, it, in, it, it, it actually has the reverse effect. Now, if you, if you say that, okay, every Wednesday afternoon, we're going to have story time and everybody sits around on the floor and there's milk and cookies and everybody gets a blanket and a pillow and all that, that, Hey, you know, if that works for you, fantastic. But yes, that could kind of interrupt a little bit, maybe the workflow. Um, that's not what we mean by, by, by storytelling. 
with with storytelling there, there's there's something in our minds we're wired as as human beings to re respond better to stories to to buy in to pay more attention to have an emotional connection when something is presented as a story and there are several classic story formulas that have been used throughout time uh, from the earliest caveman drawings to Shakespeare to some of the the movies and 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 stories that that we know really well today and one of the one of the formulas that I think translates well really into into business and and putting together business stories business narratives is basically answering these four questions and this is another thing that I that I work with people on too and and I love putting stories together for folks and and helping them map things out. But you're asking you're asking these four questions. Where are we now? Where are we going? How are we going to get there? And what's it going to look like when we get there? And thinking of the answers to those four questions and then thinking of for the each of those answers to those four questions some supporting uh themes and and messages for that and then also some specific facts and proof points for each of those answers you can put together on one page and this is something that i work with folks on but you could put together on one page a very compelling story about your organization or a particular project you're working on or a new product that you're launching that will get people that can help get people bought in and excited and ready to follow you anywhere so again the four questions where are we now where are we going? How are we going to get there? And what's it going to look like when we get there? So let me give you an example in a business uh, context of, of how that kind of story can, can come together. Let's start with a very dry example of an office move. So I know everybody's remote right now, but let's let's think about for a second back when, and some people are in offices now, but and and this is happening where a lot of people are moving offices or downsizing into into smaller offices. But let's say that your organization is moving an office from outside the city into the center of the city. And people need to know about that. And so sometimes you could think about, all right, how am I going to communicate that? Well, I'm going to tell people the date that we're moving. And I'm going to tell people the date that all of their things need to be packed up. And I'm going to tell people that we have to come in over a weekend because there's no time during the week to move. And then I'll tell people, OK, here's the date where we're going to be in our new office and and you, you, you better show up. Well, that's pretty dry, right? It's kind of boring and it doesn't provide really any any insight. So you can layer into that. OK, well, why? Why are we moving? Well, we're moving because we need to be closer to our customers who are in the center city. That's where our that's where our um, competitors are and they're taking a lot of business from us. So we need to move closer to physically to where our customers are. Okay. Well, that that provides a little bit of a of a uh, of a of a rationale for it and a little bit of reasoning behind it, but it's still pretty dry. What if I thought about this in the sense of those four questions. Again, where are we now? Where are we going? How are we going to get there? And what's it going to look like when we get there? Where are we now? Well, guess what? We're out here uh, outside the city and we're losing a lot of customers to our competitors who are inside the city because they're closer to our customers. And if this continues, the financial viability of our office, of our, of our branch is... It could could be in in danger, so we have to do something. So what have I what have I done there in this particular chapter of the story? I've introduced here's where we are now. Here's the current situation, and a little bit of a sense of urgency as well that something has to be done. So that's where are we now? Where are we going? Because of this, we've decided to move our office into the the center of the city. The center of the city provides various benefits. Number one, we're going to be closer to our customers, uh, but there, it also has some good 
transportation options, some some better restaurants will be closer to fitness clubs and some other cultural activities that people like to do after work. So that's where are we going? How are we going to get there? We are going to band together as a team because we are a team and we're going to come together and uh, and 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 talk about the benefits of of this of this new office and how it'll it'll be better uh, for all of us right uh, immediately. We are going to this this may be difficult for some folks because it might make for a different commute for people, but we're going to help each other out. We're going to support one another, and we're going to do this. We're going to provide you ample time and resources to get down there because we feel that this is really this is really important. What's it going to look like when we get there? We will have a brand new state of the art office, state of the art office in the center of the city. We'll be closer to our customers. You'll be able to see four or five customers a day because we'll be so close to them. You'll have all these great new options for for lunch during the day if if you'd like. And you'll be downtown with with other folks and and other and other friends that you have. And it'll be a much more dynamic environment and you'll be happy and more professionally fulfilled. So I'm just making all this up off the top of my head. But do you see how by putting that into the form of a of a story, we've made that a much more compelling uh, argument, much more compelling scenario than just giving people a list of, of dates and, and deadlines. So where are we going or, or where are we now? Where are we going? How are we going to get there? And what's it going to look like when we get there? It is, again, this, this age-old formula. If you think about the classic movie, The Wizard of Oz, which are, people are familiar with that in, uh, in Australia. Uh, where are we now? We're stuck in Oz. Where are we going? We, we want to get back uh, to Kansas. And to do that, we have to go to Oz to find the wizard. How are we going to get there? Follow the yellow brick road. What's it going to look like when we get there? There's no place like home. I'll finally be home with my family. So again, Shakespeare, blockbuster movies these day these days all use this this formula and when we're able to answer those four questions in a business context and use that as a foundation for our communication and tie back to it as we're communicating about something, we get people invested in a story, we get people hooked into a story and bought in, and they're much more likely to be persuaded and, and influenced. So I hope that, I know that's a lot, but I hope that, I hope that begins to make sense. I, I think the whole episode is going to just stem around these four questions because that really, really solidifies the actual need for internal communications. Because from what you have given as an example, Gary, if somebody tells you, uh, we need to move office. What any normal, sensible human being is just thinking is we're just li lifting heavy things. There's no reason for it and there's no context behind it. But if you have actually broken it down like this, okay, the reason why we're lifting these heavy things is so that we're closer to the money. We're closer to um, you know things that are going to be helping us create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. It actually now gives a reason for somebody to come in on the weekend because you're asking them to do something that is out of the norm. But if you give that sort of context, it really um, you know brings that whole what is it going to look like when when we've arrived um, you know set up. I really appreciate um, you know you breaking it down in that way because one of the benefits of internal communications is that it actually delivers the right message to the relevant people without you, you know, um, you know, mincing around with facts, because I don't think people understand facts um, as much as, you know, a, a story format. And thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. Now, while you were yeah, talking- it, it brings it just to, to highlight something. It brings a sense of urgency. So this is why we're doing something now. And it brings that picture of success, which is so important for that, that what's in it for me. And and you just said something right there too about the 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 relevant messages for the relevant people. And I would add at the relevant time too. So many times we we feel like that we, we have to rush out and, and communicate something. And it's something that that even folks in the communication field. Uh, they default into this these tactics. We think, oh, I have to communicate something. I'm going to send an email. Well, the, an email might not be the, the right way to do it. And it might not be time to do it because you're going to send an email out, let's say now, about something that's going to happen three months from now. People will read the email and then they'll forget it. 
and they're not going to, um, th- th- they won't uh, process necessarily or, 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 or buy in. And then you've kind of wasted a little bit of your, uh, of, of your communication opportunity there. So the, the, the right message for the relevant people at, at the right time also is, is tremendously important. And that's something else that I, that I, that I talk to people about quite a bit. Absolutely. Because while you're talking about that, I just thought about the time we actually had to move the office. There's certain people that just need to know the date. And then there's certain people that just need to know come on the weekend because, you know, mostly men and everybody else who's going to help with the moving of the furniture, even though the moving company is going to be involved. And I like how you told this story because I literally went in to my actual office move and I was trying to see if I actually did all the four questions, but back, <laughs> back to what we're talking about. Obviously, effective internal communications also ensures employees do not actually suffer from information overload, having to deal with things that do not concern them and actually avoids the need to maybe spend hours sending emails back and forth, messages and comments and things of that nature. Now, you also uh, touched upon something that is um, of use to a lot of people right now, which is remote uh, employees and remote communications. Now, how has that sort of changed the landscape, especially when it comes to internal communications, or is it still the same? You know, we want to talk about, you know, maybe employee experience and um, just how people are actually engaged in the company communications there. Yeah. So from, from my standpoint, it's changed things, but it really hasn't changed things. It's changed things in the way that it's we can't just you know kind of like lean back and yell down the hallway anymore or go walk and 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 go see somebody uh so it's changed the technical aspect of it but um the person who used to be in that office is now is as the person in front of a computer now but they're still the same person with the same communication needs and the same desire to understand how their work fits in same desire to understand what the heck is going on in their in their company and to to get to get basic information. So as as leaders and and communicators, all it means I think is that we just need to be a little bit more intentional about how we communicate with folks and a little more planful and a little more thoughtful. Because I can't be walking down the hallway and and say and and stick my head in somebody's door anymore. I've got to think. Okay, I've got to sit down and write somebody a note or do a, a video call or have a meeting with my team that involves scheduling and checking schedules and, and all of that. But a lot of the same dynamics are are still happening. I'll give you an example. A client I was working with uh, a while back, they were working on a, a, a pretty big project that they weren't ready to communicate out to their, their teams yet. And let's say before remote work, People might be walking past conference rooms with a lot of closed doors and seeing these meetings or a lot of the, the the senior managers aren't around and people are wondering, okay, well, what's going on? Well, this was a virtual, uh, the, the, these folks were working virtually at the time, but they would go online and look at their people's uh, online schedules and see that people were booked for half days or full days and, or not coming to normally scheduled meetings. So the same dynamic was happening. It was just happening in a in a different way. So it's different technically because we're using different tools. We have to be more thoughtful. We have to be, you have to think a little bit more creatively about, again, going to where the people are, where are people so we can we can get in front of them. But the needs are the same. We're still, at the end of the day, we're still human beings wanting to to know the same things, wanting to be informed, wanting to understand that we belong, wanting to understand how we belong and and how I and how we we fit in. So uh it 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 goes down to being more more planful and and more thoughtful and if if you've got a good culture, people will give you a little bit of permission to to try some things that maybe don't work right away. As long as they understand and they see that you're trying to to uh, to do the right thing and that you're and that you're leveling with them, you'll you'll be fine. So it goes down to just being more planful and and thinking a little bit more about how we're going to go out and communicate to folks. Absolutely. So um, I'm actually hearing my audience just saying, ah, you know what? I've been talking ever since I could talk. Um, <laughs> why would I need to have communications as something that 
um, you know, I would learn what would be the one sort of uh, step that somebody can take, especially when they have sort of heard a few things, you know, on this show today that they might want to learn and, you know, start wanting to discover a little bit more about how they can expand on their communications. What, what sort of help have you got ready for them? I'll give you three things to think about. Okay. We like thinking about things in threes. So I'll give you three things to think about. And this applies to whether or not you're sitting down uh, in on, for a one-on-one -on -one conversation, either virtually or in person. Again, it's kind of the same. If you're talking to a group of people, if you're giving a presentation to say your entire company or or to a to a customer, what have you. I want you to think of these three things. What do you want people to think? What do you want people to feel? And what do you want people to to do. So I'll give you an example. Let's go back to our office move example. If if I'm let's say I'm responsible for communicating about this this office move. What do I want people to think? I want them to think, okay, well, there's we're, there's a reason to move and and we're going to be moving and there's some things that I need to do. This kind of boils down to the facts of the of the matter. What do I want people to feel? I feel, uh, I, I might feel nervous, but I'm also cautiously optimistic about this, this office move. This could actually be a pretty cool place to work. And I'm going to, I'm going to give this office move a, a fair chance before I, before I make any judgments. What do I want people to do? I want people to do what we need them to do by the deadlines to, to move down there. And we want people to give give the move a fair chance and to say good things about it to their other coworkers. So think, feel, and do. It applies to any communication, whether it's an informal one-on-one -on -one or a big mass communication or anything in between. That will help you organize your thoughts and, and, and make your communication a little more crisper and then also, to your point earlier, relevant. Too often, and how many times have we seen an email like this come from the head of an organization where we've worked that says, okay, it's we're coming up on the end of the year and our revenues are our our, our revenues are slightly below where they were last year. But uh but we need to finish the the year strong. And I know you can do it, and let's all work together and we're gonna finish the year strong. We've all seen emails like that, right? Well, that email had the think piece. Okay, we're coming up a little bit short on revenue and we need to get going. It had the feel piece to ramp people up and get ready to go. And Okay, I'm in, I'm ready, let's go. But it never told people what to do, right? So I'm sitting there as somebody who's uh, on the receiving end of this and I'm thinking, okay, I'm in. What do I do? What do I actually do? We, and it's weird, I know, but we, a lot of times we just forget to, tell people what to do. And, and we have to be a lot more, uh, well, depending on your communication style, a little bit to a lot more prescriptive sometimes in, in what it is that, um, that we're looking to drive. If we're looking to drive a particular behavior, let's be specific about what we need from, from people. So think, feel, and do. It applies to basically everything. So we don't always think that through sometimes, we especially leaving out the last part. So if we uh, if we think about those three things, that 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 will definitely help. I think this is probably going to be sitting amongst <laughs> one of the best videos that we've ever produced because it's literally a masterclass in communication, and the communication has just been so clear and transparent. And I feel I bet you say that about all your episodes. And, and I feel <laughs> like you and me are going to be talking a lot more, not just about this episode, but our audience now is thinking, what should we do in order to get started with this communication um, you know, thing that we've done? You did mention you are a coach and a trainer. What is it that they what is the action step that they may need to take right now in order to actually learn a lot more from you uh, so that they can actually really, really streamline their internal communications? Yeah, well, uh, you could start right now on on that storytelling template and think, feel, do and and some of those things. I have uh, eleven e-learning courses on on my website that um, 
there's there's one on um uh a corporate narrative which go, takes a, a deeper dive into the storytelling template there's one on I, I call it stakeholder analysis that takes a little bit of a deeper dive into the think feel do there's uh another course that takes elements of uh of both of those uh on a, on another topic and there's a, a bunch of others that talk about communicating internally the communications people use it and i think it's 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 worthwhile for for anybody in business who wants to get out there and and ensure that they're communicating uh to the to the best of their ability and potential for uh in 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 the business world so I have those uh, 11 e-learning courses on the website it's at plus p l u s dot inside comms i n s i d e c o m m s dot com plus dot inside comms dot com and you can go right on there and uh and and purchase the courses we have uh, discounts for for full teams so if you're looking to use those courses for uh, for a group of of people send me a note there's a link on the website to do that and we'll come up with a with a custom discount price for for that i've got a client who has has purchased access to four of those courses for their entire company of 1200 people and it's a core part of their of their uh, learning and development curriculum for for their ent entire company it's a professional services company so there's um so there's that i also do live uh, virtual and in person training always wanted to get down to your part of the world prosper so uh would would love to would love to come and hang out with uh with everybody down there and 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 talk about this but can also do uh virtual live sessions as well and and have done that for uh for folks so there's so there's that and then there's ongoing communication coaching um and and so forth and some consulting as well that we can take a deeper dive into some of these things and and many other tools as well that'll help you become really a, an effective workplace communicator. So if this has been interesting for you today, send me a note, give me a call and we'll, um, we'll work on it together. Fantastic. This, this, this has been beautiful. And I am actually thinking of how, um, you know, me and you can collaborate. That's something that we can do um, pretty much post show, but I really appreciate your, your time on the call today. Um, and if you're watching this show right now, you can actually tell, that communication is actually one of those very important things that is at the backbone of a business that's profitable and enjoyable because you're sharing information about the company so that your employees or your team can actually do their job well so that you, the stakeholders in your business are actually aligned with the goals and missions that you have and the internal communications, it's not just storytelling, as Gary has elaborated. There's four questions that you need to align your business with and also three ways to actually uh, strategize the communication to make sure that it's effective and it's actually re-hitting the mark. So internal communications purpose is to actually provide an effective flow of information between your organization uh, and the departments and all the colleagues involves and you know without good communication it looks like everything can just come to a grinding halt now i think because this show is all about talking you and me could go on and on but i think we're running out of tape and also <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't want our audience to stop watching our videos because they think they go on and on and on but i think this has been a very valuable masterclass in internal communications thank you so much gary for your time today this has been a lot of fun thank you for having me absolutely